hello guys. I'm here today with uh, a worldwide the pure talent of the boxing field, King Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you. Uh, Thank you. It's such an honor to have you here today. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Today was a little chaotic, but it's, I don't know, it all worked out. But we made it. All right. We, made it. we, we, we didn't die, though. Right. So that might <laughs> That's good. So I was wondering, what kind of guy were you when you were little? Like, have you ever had a fight outside the ring? How did you react, like, to provocation? Uh, I was a scared little boy. Um, I just didn't like confrontation when I was a kid. It's kind of like, I, it's kind of funny, though, right? Because I'm a boxer now. But right. sensitive. Um, I could feel a lot, and I was kind of a mama's boy in, in, in a way. Um, but I also had this fire in me that would snap out of nowhere. I had no control over um, if I was pushed to the edge. If somebody backed me into a corner, then it got really scary. So that was my, uh, that's how I was. All right. So any like weird facts that happened to you that like you want to tell me, let you remember? I beat this kid up. That his, I beat this kid up. His name was Deba. Oh. Hilarious, right? It's like from Friday. So basically, he threw my ball <laughs> down the <laughs> the street. Respectfully, I took that as disrespectful. So I grabbed his basketball and I threw it over the fence. I gave him a fair shot. I said, hey, you get your ball, I'll go get my ball. We call it even. He said, nope, I want to beat you up. Oh. So we start fighting. Mind you, I know how to box already at this time, so I just started slapping him. I hit him so hard, he had a welt on his face. Then his mom comes out of nowhere in the car and says, thank you for beating my son's ass. That's a weird thing that happened. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> <It's red. laughs> I got weird shit. Well, also, this girl bit me on my on my arm on the school bus and left a like, oh, huge ass bite mark for no reason. We were in school. I didn't do anything. I think I tapped her on her head to stop because she wouldn't. I was like, is she going to let go? And she just kept biting me deeper and deeper. It was like, How did you react? Like, you were. Ow, that hurts. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, tapped her on the head, like, ah, please. Like, you're hurting me. Like, for real. Right. It's crazy. So, who did you inspire you, like, in the beginning of um, your career? Did you have an idol? I don't have any idols you know obviously um i believe in in jesus christ god so i don't have idols but i had inspiration a, a lot of inspiration um i could find inspiration from a three-year-old if, if they're making sense like my daughter is as smart as she's so smart i get inspiration for her if it's inspiring i'm inspired so like i could name a bunch of people but uh the list would be too long all right. And the, are these people really close to you or like people like in the boxing field, for example? Uh, I mean, yeah, you got um, Oscar De La Hoya. You got Floyd Mayweather. You have Manny Pacquiao, Muhammad Ali, uh, Mike Tyson. I mean, there's so many uh, people I, I find is Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, you know, that there's just so many people. So you mentioned many. So name the three best boxer in the history, in your opinion. You. Yeah. That's a good one. History. I got to say Manny Pacquiao because he's an eight division world champion. For you to come from the smallest weight class you could imagine and become a champion in eight divisions, that's an all the time great. I would say Floyd Mayweather. And then now. Uh, Muhammad Ali, All right. And who is the strongest spider you've met so far? It's either this guy named Oscar Duarte. I hit hard as shit. And uh, uh, Romero Duna, this uh, Filipino or fighter, he hit hard. You know, I knocked him out in one round in like a minute and 30. Every time he touched me, it hurt. It hurt. It's all. So basically, in your life, uh, you got many things. Success, fame, money. So, um, do you think like um, uh, you changed over the years, or are you the same person, the same Ryan, towards those people that were always there for you? I feel like it's better that um, somebody close to me can handle that. That's been around my whole life. What do you think, Emmy? Have I changed? Explain why. Come in. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yes, you're on it. 
And Come. You're the only one that's known me my whole life since I was shitting in a diaper. So you're the only one that can actually speak on this. How long have you guys known each other for? Since he was born? <laughs> 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 since he was born. Yeah, so, um, no, I don't think he's changed. The only thing I could say is that he's changed is he's grown into a amazing young man, a good fighter, a father. But as far as him being goofy, silly, loving, caring, that's all the same. So I'm going to ask to you then, what's his best quality and his worst defect? His best quality is... Uh, you got to be 100% honest. No filter. Give me the worst quality. Go well, first, I want to say the best quality. The best quality is that when he um, puts his mind to something, he always gets it done, no matter if it's hard or not. Um, he also loves his family very, very much. So I think those are two good qualities, best qualities. Um, I love God. And he loves God. And he talks about God without shame. So I think that's amazing. And a worse quality, he's a little stubborn. <laughs> a little stubborn. I don't want to say that's a bad quality or a worse quality. That's just something that could be good. Could be good. Which is good for him and his career. I would say I'm impulsive. I think that's my worst quality. I think the one thing and I go with it, I don't even care. Could be good and bad at the same right. time. Right. right. Uh, sometimes it's a hit, though. Sometimes I'm impulsive and I win. <laughs> sometimes I'm impulsive and I lose. You just don't know. So you talk about religion. When did it start, like... <laughs> when did you start your pilot, like, uh, Jesus Christ? I was a little boy. Um... I had a dream in heaven I was fighting, protecting um, the kingdom of heaven. I had that dream, and then I always had a sense that um, something was... Gu it started off as, what is that? Something's guiding me. But I, I didn't know what it was at first. I was a kid. And then as I evolved as a young man and as a teenager, I realized, oh, God's here. Okay, God is talking to me. He wants me to do something. Okay. And then it involved his, who's Jesus? Because I could never wrap my hand around Jesus and God and the whole uh, three in one thing, you know? Well, three three in one, you know, how can Jesus be God? I'll be, I, I couldn't wrap my head around it for a long time. And then finally God gave me a revelation. I was in a back room one day and uh, I was praying to God. And all of a sudden my hands felt like they like were illuminating, like they were electric. Like it was like. And then God spoke to me, you're going to knock this guy out cold with one punch. And then I started praying for him. He said, pray for him that he wakes up. I do, and then it happens. And then I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, and then God gave me a vision. I was going to knock out Luke Campbell to the body with one punch. Then I do it. And then I said, God gave me that. And then all of a sudden, um, I had a revelation where um, God doesn't take shortcuts, you know, uh, in the Old Testament, um, Abraham, I'm going to just go quick. I'm trying to summarize that Abraham was going to kill his first son that he couldn't even conceive because Sarah was too young or too old and she has it. That's his only son he has. He's about to kill him in, in trust of God and God stops him. It was foreshadowing Jesus Christ. See, so God doesn't take shortcuts. Um, Jesus was obviously the image of God, and he walked among us so that he could tell us truth and set a, show us how to really do it because nobody could fulfill that law. Nobody can follow those rules. It's impossible. If you think you can, you know you're lying, and now you're at fault. So um, the wages of sin is death. Jesus came and, you know, sacrificed his life on the line, lived a perfect life, sinless life, Die for our sins. God wrote, you know, the Spirit of God rose him from the dead. He came back and showed everybody that I am He. He ascended to heaven. We were left with the Holy Spirit, and that's why I moved with so much truth. That's why I can't lose, no matter what I do. I think on my shoes, right? You know, in this interview, I, oh, he's crazy. All of a sudden, fire. <laughs> like, I can't lose. It's impossible. But I just want to spread this message as pure as I possibly can with no remorse. And I like to be very communicative. 
if you have a question, I can answer it because I'm following the spirit of truth. The truth, the Holy Spirit will bring you to all truth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue because I could go all day along with this, but um, but um, it says in the Bible, if you're going to boast about anything, boast about the Lord. So Jesus is the best. Right. And what about love? How important love is in your life? How many important love stories do you have? Well, I'm going to go back to the Bible. Love covers a multitude of sins. I love everybody. So all the sins I do, they're covered. <laughs> God knows I do. I do. I'm just a. I'm a young dude. You know, I'm 25. I won't make mistakes. Uh, I'm a big lover, as uh, as you can see in my life. You know, I, I had a baby at 19. I've been married. Like I'm a lover boy. You understand what I'm saying? Like I love to love. You love real hard. Real hard, and then I figure out like, dang, I'm like, like I I, I shouldn't be so impulsive. You understand what I'm saying? With love, I need to take my time. I need to be real. I can't overestimate my love. You know, on it's more it's not that I don't love. It's a whole it's a whole different thing. It's more of a what am I capable of as a human? You know what I'm saying? I got you. At the right time, I got you. I'll be I'll be the best husband in the world at the right time. A hundred percent. I know it. And I'll I'll take you to another level. Like, I would just be the best husband ever. But until that time comes, I'll know. All right. And so, lives and your career is made for sure by ups and downs. So, have you ever experienced a bad moment in which you just wanted to give off? And uh, if you asked, where did you find the strength to go on and pull out? Great question. See, finally, thank God, somebody that doesn't ask the same questions every <laughs> time. Okay, so... Basically, what happened to me was, um, I, obviously, I went through a mental health crisis at 17. People don't even know this. They they thought that well, one time in 2021 was my first mental No, I had a mental health crisis at 17. Um, I don't know what happened. It just hit me like a rock. Right before I went pro, boom, I was hit with anxiety, depression, OCD, all that one time. Like, I was so hurt. I, I couldn't even walk. I couldn't move. I was crying every day. I was. What happened? Like, I just. I took some NyQuil or something, and then it like tripped my brain out, and then I thought I was dying, and then it just turned into a hypochondria, and then it just kept on going. It went to the point where I was like, I have cancer. I have this. I have that. And then I got so depressed because I genuinely believed, and I couldn't escape that thought. And then, um, then I started praying, and, and, and God slowly removed that from me. I met a girl. That kind of got me a little happy. You know, first girlfriend, really serious one. I was like, all right, cool, I'm chilling. And then it kind of motivated me to, like, box, you know, again. And then I went pro, and then I started killing it, and then uh, me and her broke up. <laughs> now, love saved you. In a way, yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, love did save you. You know, God's love and, and just a human love. Um, and then I went to another mental health crisis after I fought Luke Campbell. So during this time, I had so many epiphanies and I seen so many things in the spiritual, you know, realm in a way, you know, not to get too deep, but um, I was looking at, like, it, I was experiencing, it was intense, okay? I, that's all. It's like somebody plugged a computer chip in my brain and gave me everything I needed to know about God. And it did not stop. I knew everything about numbers, colors, the way I knew exactly what you were thinking. It was like, okay, and it wasn't stopping. And it was true though. It wasn't like I was tripping because I don't do drugs. The most things I've ever done was drink and smoke weed. That's it. That's all. But I've never done drugs in my life. So, and at this time, I'm not drinking at all, because when I was in a, in a can back then, not even one drink. So I'm really tripping. <laughs> So you gotta you gotta imagine I'm like whoa what you rush. <laughs> yeah. I'm like uh this is like interesting God what is going on then I ask God where am I uh, I'm gonna shorten it I had a spiritual uh, experience that uh, was supernatural in my room I could go into details I'll go into later at first I was okay I couldn't wrap my hand out of it after I started thinking logically about it so now I started using my humanly brain and then it threw me off do I get it too much. What is going on? Is it because I'm dehydrated? And then it just tumbled into a place where it was bad. 
and it, it brought me to my knees. But I believe I was humbled by God, so I don't uh, run into a mistake. He needed to like humble me because I thought I was something else. After that, I was like, "Ooh, I'm different." Like, but it was like I have so much power. Like, it was like it, I felt like something like like I I couldn't do anything. You know, I do. I feel that now, but in a more humble way. You know, and, and God had to clear some things up with me. He brought me there, and then slowly, as I was coming back, I wanted, you know, I had to learn how to be myself, because after that, I didn't know who I was. I was like, well, I don't even know what's going on. Name, I was so depressed, um, to the point where I wanted to kill myself. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I was on. I remember the moment I was driving in a car. I had a bunch of pills that they gave me, and I was gonna, I was gonna put it all in my mouth. It's like I'm done. There's no way. I couldn't remember anything. I lost my train of thought every 10 seconds. I was like forgetful Tom from uh, 50 First Dates. The moment I thought of something, I forgot. I was like, oh my, why am I living? This makes no sense. Then I would forget. <laughs> and then I would have to rethink that. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And then I was the thing like, I'm remembering that I can't remember like it. <laughs> but, um, in a more serious note, I was looking at the sunset, and, and I, what I say is I just didn't have the balls to do it. I was committed in my mind to do it. I just didn't have the balls to do it. And uh, it never got easy even after that. My dad came rushing down trying to help me, and and everybody tried to come to the rescue, but um, nobody could help me at that point. And then, I, uh, and then slowly I just started saying fuck it, drinking every day, Playing poker, not giving a fuck. Oh, well, life's done. I'm going to just drink myself to death now. That's a slower, painful, not so much pain. At least I'm having fun while I'm dying. You know, that's what I was thinking in my head. But then um, this guy, I don't know where I was playing poker. This guy goes, can I talk to you? Who is this guy? He's he's already erratic at the poker day by screaming at people. But something, I was like, okay, I'll let him talk to me. Anyways. He goes and says, do you know who you are? And I'm like, yes, I know who I am. And he goes, you know, do you know who you are? And he got serious. He said, you know you're chosen by God, right? He does told you this. And then he goes, what are you doing? Like, you could be all these gods. Get back to what you were meant to do. Snap me right out of it. So these words were, like, helpful for you? Yeah, and then, and, the yeah plan, to... and then playing poker, I also like had an epiphany where it was like, I would look at the cards and I would have a good feeling. And then I would play the hand off the feeling. Right. And then I would lose. And then something hit me, it's like, okay, don't trust your feelings, trust the truth. Oh. And then I started discovering that whole concept. Your feelings are, they're like, the wind, it comes and it leaves and it comes and it leaves and it comes and it leaves and they're always fleeting. They're here and then they're leaving the next day. You know, great, I feel great today and I feel horrible tomorrow or I feel horrible today and then the next second I'm feeling great. So I understood that the only thing that matters is truth. And then I started going on my journey of trying to get back into boxing and trying to clean up all the lies in my life that I was living currently. Because um, that was hindering my blessing. Right. Because I was living like a liar, you know, um, being um, not the best husband, not the best father, uh, just living in a lie, just not, just trying to be something that I wasn't quite ready to do. And uh, and then once I began to be more truthful, my life started opening up. That's why when they say the truth sets you free, it's probably the most truest team ever. True. True, 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 true. Also, so if you were not a boxer, who are you today? I'd be a fireman. Because I run to the fire. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't play from it. I go straight to it. And I go around, I go, and go put out the fire. Straight up. Little kid and burning, I'm saving him. I say, put the flames on me, I'm cool. I'll take it. <laughs> Enough for really that I would do. All right, and so how do you feel today? Like, uh, how are you, like, training for for the next match? Of... I've been training my ass off. People can say otherwise. Look at my physique. Look at my condition. 
how you feel. So you feel good? It's amazing. You feeling that, like in your best moment? 100%. For sure. So, and what would you like to tell your fans that can't wait to see you on the ring? I would just say expect the unexpected. This is going to be, um, this is going to be, this is still be fire. Like I don't do anything that's boring. So, um, just expect the unexpected. I'll give y'all a good night and, um, you know, pray for Devin Haney's that he, that he's okay. Um, but let the God that will be done now, mine. I'm dead ass to, um, dead serious. And, uh, yeah. So they gotta be ready. Yeah, he gotta be. I, I know I'm be ready. <laughs> for sure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Also, uh, I wanted to give you this as a present. It's my new fragrance, fragrance for man. So I wanted you to try it. Yeah, I know my favorite color is blue. <laughs> You know it's gonna be great. I didn't know that, but I just you know. That's crazy. That you mind? Yeah, no, 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 go for that. It's yours. All right, don't mind me. I put on a lot of cologne. I mean, people think I'm crazy, but that shit runs out sometimes. <laughs> well, you got to like, you know, not. It's all right. It's yours. Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was such an honor to have you today. Yeah. And uh, so, guys, we we'll see you on the next episode. Ciao. Ciao, Bella.